Hi, this is Miss Slitton, and this is my wonderful period three AP biology class. Say hi. Hi. All right. And, oh, you can't see what I see. And we are discussing chapter 10, and you're going to remember chapter 11 terms are due next class, yes? How many are there? Two? Sweet. Uh, 17. Okay. Um, we're talking about myomyomiosis and sexual reproduction. And there's a purpose for doing meiosis. The purpose, if, I, if you were going to put it in a nutshell, remember we talked about essays, trying to be concise in your words and to the point. Why are you doing meiosis? What is the purpose behind meiosis? What would you say? Okay, I'm looking more, yes. Okay, one reason that you would go through the process of meiosis is to get some variation because in the process of doing meiosis, you're going to get some variability in your genes. Exactly. Okay? And you have to get the chromosome number down to what? Half. Right? If you're sexually reproducing, you can only send half of your chromosomes in that sperm and half of your chromosomes in your egg because when that sperm fertilizes that egg, you're going to form a new combination of traits, of alleles, of genes, a new recombination, and that will be diploid. So you have a haploid plus a haploid makes a diploid. When we did my arms, my legs, my ptosis, this is for growth and reproduction. We're, or sorry, growth and repair. So you want to take clones of your cells and make more cells that are exactly like it. If they are diploid, you're going to make more diploid cells. If those particular cells are haploid, you're going to make more what? Haploid cells. It's same, same. But myomyomyosis always starts with a diploid cell. And then you're going to make haploid cells as a result. So instead of doing one division, we have to do how many? Two. two. And we will refer to them as meiosis one and meiosis two. Okay, And we're going to be learning about that process, where the variability comes from, and when it goes bad. Okay, So those are the different areas. So here, the mom's body is diploid, yes? And the baby's body is diploid. But what did the mom make in her ovaries? Eggs. Are her ovaries haploid or diploid? Haploid. Her ovaries are diploid. The only haploid cells you and I have is either our sperm or our what? Egg. Now plants, angiosperms, flowering plants, if you look at those plants out there, you could think of them as having ovaries that are haploid. They actually have haploid structures within them. It's called alternation of generations, okay? And they have a portion of them, a very small portion. In a um, female, you would have seven cells that are haploid cells, okay? And within there, one of those cells is an egg. And that will get fertilized by plant sperm, which you know as pollen. Okay. And it'll land on the sticky stigma of that flowering plant and grow down in there and meet up with the egg and form a diploid zygote within the flower. But they have a whole region of their body that is haploid. If you go to bryophytes or maybe some seaweed, some other plants, they have a totally different generation that is haploid. So they have their diploid body, they undergo myomyosis and they make what's called a spore. The spore is haploid. The spore grows up into a whole haploid structure. You can't even tell the difference. You could be swimming next to some seaweed that's diploid. You could be swimming next to some seaweed that's haploid. That haploid structure will do mitosis to make haploid gametes, ghost child, that will come in together, okay, and then make a diploid plant. Clearly two different organisms living separately alternation of generations, okay? And we'll talk about that. Those are different kinds of life cycles. Um, referring to haploid and diploid structures, blue, this is your diagram to talk about this asymmetrical baby. Go ahead, blue, talk about it.
All right. Slate, I have a picture for you too. Go ahead, slated one. You get to use the naked family who likes to walk around naked holding hands. Okay? Talk about review our cycles. Go ahead. <laughs> they have a very large child. They have to work very hard to feed it. All right. Now, how many chromosomes does naked mother have? She has 46. Okay? Naked mama has 46 chromosomes. Half of those came from her mom. So how many came from her mom? 23. And half came from her dad. 23. Right? Those came together to give her how many? 46. She has 23 homologous pairs. Chromosome one from mom, chromosome one from dad. Chromosome two from mom, chromosome two from dad, yes? Okay, but when she goes to make her eggs, she's not gonna do my arms, my legs, mitosis, she's gonna do what? Myo, my meiosis, getting ready for what? Sex. So she's gonna have to make an egg that only has how many chromosomes in it? 23. 23. Now when do we know DNA replicates? In the S, S stage of what? Interface. Interface. Thank you. So she had her 46 chromosomes, and all 46 made a copy of themselves, right? Okay. In meiosis one, what she's going to do is mom chromosome and dad chromosome are going to hook up. And when she does meiosis one, she's going to separate all the homologous pairs from each other. All the mom and dad chromosomes will be separated. Maybe one cell gets more mom chromosomes, maybe another cell gets more dad chromosomes. That's some of the variability that we were talking about. You never know what you're gonna get in that, okay? Then in meiosis two, she's gonna separate the sister chromatid, which is just like mitosis, right? When you separate the sister chromatids. So she does myomimiosis. This is only gonna have 23 chromosomes. The sperm, only 23. Then back in baby, we're back to a diploid cell of 46. He will only undergo mitosis until he gets ready to make his sperm and then he will undergo what? Meiosis. meiosis. All right? So when we watch this baby grow, how will we watch this baby grow? You're yourself. Getting ready for your quiz later. Yay. Buttons don't work. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so sad, the joy. Yes. Wait, don't ask me about this question because not everybody answered it. To me, he looks like this. Watch him with your eyes, right? What what will he be undergoing today? Let me give you a little tip. I will never see you do meiosis. Okay? When you watch somebody grow, you are only seeing my arms, my legs, my toes. Okay, go. What's your question? Um, so, what are, like, grown babies, like, while they're still like, in embryos, do meiosis? Yes. Yeah? Wow. That's why I did a look, it looked like a little boy to me. Okay. Yeah. Before, before we are born, all ladies in this room, you underwent meiosis one in all of your eggs. We only undergo meiosis two. If we ovulate and an egg is in the oviduct and a member of the fallopian swim team shows up, some sperm come a knocking, okay? 
And if they're like, if we're like, oh, you were serious about that, okay. Then we will undergo meiosis two at that point, um, and then um, that egg will get fertilized. And we'll talk about the process of how that goes, because then you would think, oh, there are two eggs there. No, they're not. Okay, there's an egg in a polar body, and we'll learn about that later at the end. Okay. Um, but men, if I say sperm, you just made 500 of them. Sperm, you made 500 more. You're constantly making more sperm. Sperm, 500, okay? <laughs> Leave them alone, they can stay right there, okay? Um, make you go blind. Um, but <laughs> but um, ladies, we got at least meiosis one done before we were born. All right. He got first in the last question? Oh, we can see who did get first. Let's see. This was the last question. Oh, Max. Oh, I can't Okay. Um, what is that? That plasticky thing? Plasticky rod. That's sperm. How do you make sperm? Meiosis. Yeah. My oh my meiosis. Surprise! I really want to suck, but I won't. Check your bio buddies clicker. Is it the bell of shame or the dong of victory? Is there shame over there? Niche. Is that shame? Am I getting shame? All right. Now. You have within your diploid body every cell, right? Um, you have chromosome from your mother, chromosome from your father. These are called the homologous pair. During S stage of interphase, each one of these chromosomes will undergo my um, DNA replication. And these are not the homologous pair. Look at me. These are not the homologous What are these? Sister Sisters. 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 This is the homologous pair. It doesn't matter if they were just not replicated or, or replicated, they're still the homologous pair. You with me? Okay, these are the sisters. So, um, the sis, uh, homologous pairs are the same size, the same shape, and they code for the same characteristics. This one right here might say that you are to have blue eyes, and this one right here might say you have brown eyes, right? But it's both about eye color. You all right with that? Okay. So, um, when we look at our 23 homologous pairs, okay, here's one from each. Actually, I don't want to explain this one. I want, did I put something down here? Whose turn is it, blue or slate? Blue. Blue, go. You explain it, not me. You go. Okay, are you good on that? I don't want to beat this horse. Yes. Okay. Like on the right, that's like two different coats. On the very far right, two orange like lights. These? On the very end, yeah. Okay, this, this, just ignore this for a minute, okay? This is a homologous pair. Let's say it's chromosome 14, okay? So this is dad's 14, here's mom's 14. You have two chromosome 14s, one from each of your parents. During the S stage of interphase, mom's chromosome 14 will replicate, the sister chromatids, dad's chromosome 14 will repl replicate. They were a homologous pair when they only had one chromatid per chromosome. They are still a homologous pair when they have two chromatids per chromosome. These are sister chromatids. They're copies. Right. It doesn't matter how many chromatids you have. It's just 
for one chromosome? Yeah, it's just, hey, is your chromosome a singleton or is your chromosome a double? And it's only this for a short time, right? It's going to be like this until they separate. And this is either happening during mitosis, right, or meiosis too. When we go over that, you'll, I'll show you that. Okay? All right. Um, so this right here is a homologous pair. You all right with that? And th not for people, these are all some plant. This allele right here codes for purple flowers, and this allele codes for white flowers. But this homologous pair is the same size, the same shape, they code for the same characteristics. They just have a variation of a gene is called an allele. A variation on a gene is called an allele. Brown eyes, blue eyes. Bra blonde hair, brown hair, red hair, right? These are all variations. Our next chapter is super cool because we're moving into the inheritance and what you get and how that plays out. Okay, that's chapter 11. Okay, now what's going to happen, riddle me this, what's going to happen during the S stage of interface? DNA replication. DNA replication. DNA replication. Okay, so now I have two copies of the white and two copies of the purple. Okay, so look, see my fingers, I'm matching them. Are you with me? Meiosis one, be with me. Meiosis one, we're gonna separate the homologous pairs. In meiosis two, we're gonna separate the sisters. Okay, so first mom and dad chromosomes are separated, that's the divorce. Then we rip apart the rest of the family, then the sisters, then the children. Parents, children. <laughs> Think of it that way, okay? In a hideous terms. <laughs> All right? Now, cool, great. I never knew a divorce could be so fun. All right, now, um, next, okay, I want you to see something here. On this, these are both white flowers and these are both purple flowers, right? Let's say on this same chromosome, this is long stem, then this would be what? Long stem. And let's just say over here, this one is short stem and this one is short stem. Okay, what's the first stage we go into when we do nuclear division? What's always the first stage? Prophase. Prophase. This is going to be referred to as prophase one. Because we're going to do prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, and then what? Cytokinesis. Then a little intermission called interkinesis. And then we're going to do prophase two, what? Metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase. What's always going to happen in an anaphase, no matter what? Something's going to get separated. What's always going to happen in a metaphase? Something's in the middle, right? That part doesn't change. But what's going to happen in when we do myomimiosis is in prophase one, the parents get together nice and tight because we want to organize that. We want one with one, two with two, three with three because we don't want to screw up, right? So they line up with their dance partner, okay? They snuggle in tight and the chromatids, these are sister chromatids, right? They literally intertangle with one another and so much so they can either disconnect and exchange information that's called crossing over it would be like if you went and made out with your boyfriend and girlfriend and while you're making out you exchange pieces of your leg so when you got home your parents like oh there's evidence that you were making out i can see you have your boyfriend's leg on okay do you know it is different is it still a leg yeah. Yeah. yes is it a different leg yes this is how we get what Variations. variations. This is one of the hallmark ways to get variations. So here we see that normally white flowers travel with long stems and over here purple flowers travel with short, short stems. stems. If there's evidence of crossing over, the evidence would be a white flower with a short, short stem. stem. Raise your hand if you have dark colored hair and dark eyes. Raise your hand. Keep them high. Look at us. Of course they pee. Okay, now. <laughs> okay. okay. Dark colored hair, dark eyes. Now, raise your hand if you have light colored hair. Not just you. And that's a recessive trait. Light colored hair and light eyes. Raise your hand. With the dark people. Dark hair, dark eyes. Okay? Now, look how much of us in the room. Hair color and eye color travels together. Now, put your hand down. What if you have dark hair? I'm supposed to have dark hair. This is a lie, right? Okay. What if you have dark hair and blue eyes? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah. Okay. 
That is evidence of crossing over somewhere in our past. I don't know what your family looks like. My mom also had dark hair and um, blue eyes. Or do some of you have blonde hair with brown eyes? There, there we go, okay? Evidence of crossing over. Is that common? No, okay? Because it usually travels, we're not mutants, it's just that those, <laughs> I'm not a mutant, okay? Um, but that is evidence of crossing over. So if we look here, okay, um, chiasmata, okay? That's where it's going down. Homologous pairs are snuggling in, exchanging pieces of information, and that's how you get a little variety. Whose turn is it? Slate. Slate. Slate? Go ahead. Explain it. Okay. All right, so now look, look at your notes, okay? So overview, number one, DNA replicates as in mitosis. Homologous pairs, on your background, cells undergoing myomyosis are diploid. You have two copies of each chromosome, one from both, what? Yes. Parents. Alleles are alternate forms of a gene. Oh, gosh. Alternate forms of a gene. Mother's chromosome could say blue eyes, father could say what? Brown. Brown. Okay, when they do, there's a, several words all referring to the same thing. It all occurs during prophase one. Okay, you see the synaptonial complex, you see tetrad, look down a little bit farther. You'll see chiasmata later in the notes. You see bivalent. It's all <coughs> referring to when, and this is how I remember it, they synap together in synapses. And this is referred to as a tetrad or a bivalent. That's when you're going to get that crossing over occurring. Um, so um, little letter I process called synapsis. S-Y-N-A-P-S-I-S. That bivalent is two chromosomes in close association. It remains this way through the first two stages of meiosis one. Tell me, what are, gonna, what are the names of the first two stages of meiosis one? Prophase one and metaphase one, good job. All right, now let's look at a diagram to show meiosis, you know, in a nutshell. And I know this is tiny. Okay, how many chromosomes are in this cell? Four. Four. If we were doing mitosis, how many daughter cells would we make? Eight. How many would we make? Eight. Oh my gosh, you had a whole chapter on it, you have a quiz and a little bit on it. How many cells would you make if you did mitosis? Two. Two. Okay, if it started out with four chromosomes, how many chromosomes would be in each daughter cell? Four. Or two. <laughs> it's hard because two and four and you're getting the numbers. Let's, let's try it a different way, okay? What if I had a cell that had 10 chromosomes in it? 10, okay? Okay. When I did mitosis, how many cells would I end up at the end? Two, Two cells. How many chromosomes would be in each? 10. Ten. Mitosis. My arms, my legs, mitosis. Clone cells. Clones. Whatever you start out, out with, all of them repl replicate, all of them separate. If I start out with 20 chromosomes in the cell, I will make two cells each with 20 chromosomes. If I start out with 48, I will make two cells each with 48. But if I do myomymiosis and I start out with 20 chromosomes in that cell, I'm going to end up with cells that only have how many in them? 10. Half the amount. Okay? So here we have four chromosomes in this cell. Do you agree? Yeah. So we're going to make cells that have only how many chromosomes in them? Four. Myomymiosis, we're getting ready for sex. It better not have four. It needs to have two. Okay? Got that? Talk it over with your brow buddy right now so your head wraps around it. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay. Now, so all four of these chromosomes are going to replicate. Replicate when? When are they going to replicate? S stage of? Thank you. Okay. Now they've all replicated, but notice they've lined up with their dance partner. How many homologous pairs, whisper it to your bio buddy, how many homologous pairs are in the cell? Whisper it to your bio buddy. Now show me with your fingers. There's the little pair and the big pair. Do you see it? In meiosis one, we need to separate each of those pairs. Then we'll have two cells. Then each of those cells will have to do meiosis two, and we will separate the sisters. Okay? So now I just got through doing meiosis one. Now I have how many cells? Two. I only have one little one in it. It's doubled. It is doubled, but I only have one little chromosome, and I have one big. One little, one big. One got the big red, one got the big blue. We didn't know who was going to get what, depending on how they lined up. Look how they lined up. What if both blues had lined up on the same side? Both blues would have been over here, and both reds would have gone over here. So there would only have been red chromosomes here when they did the second, myo, right? And only blue over here. This is part of how you get what? Variation. variation. So now we know two ways we get variation, right? Due to crossing, crossing over. over. And this is called independent assortment. They can line up however they want. What do you think, how many pairs do you have? 23, 23 homologous pairs. What do you think the odds of, of all your dads in you when you're either making your kinds of gametes that all your dad's chromosomes lined up right here and all your mom's chromosomes lined up right here? Right, to the 23rd opportunities there, right? Okay, so it could have lined up any old way it wanted to. That's independent assortment. That's your second way to get variety. Okay, now, here we have two cells. Each of these now needs to undergo meiosis two, because we need to separate the sisters so that we can make one, two, three, four cells. And how many chromosomes are in each of those four cells? Two. Just two. Okay, now, one more thing. There's got to be a hair hanging from my arm right here. Can you see it? Because it's driving me nuts. I can't even focus right here. It's like walking through a spider web and you can feel it on you. I'm just like, I can't focus. Sorry. No, it's really important. I already lost it. What did I say right before that? Two chromosomes at the end. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll think of it as I go through it. Okay, so on your, on your two divisions, meiosis one, meiosis two, your anaphase is always going to be about a way. And here, this is, if remember I told you on your essays, if you can be succinct and tell me exactly what's going on, the big deal in meiosis one, it, oh, I know what it is, is that the homologous pairs separate during your anaphase. And in meiosis two, what's going to separate? Sister, Sister chromatids. Now, this is what I wanted to say. A cell is considered haploid once you separate the homologous pairs. A cell is considered haploid once you, once you separate the homologous pairs. So these two cells right here, okay, that is considered a haploid cell and that is considered a haploid cell because it doesn't have its dance partner. Now, does it still have two copies of that chromosome right in there? Yes, but it doesn't have its partner, okay? So these are officially haploid after meiosis one. Okay, now go to your notes. Okay, two divisions ultimately generates how many haploid cells? Four, right? Meiosis one separates what? What are you putting right there? Smallest pairs of chromosomes, okay? Meiosis two occurs in each cell created by meiosis one. It separates the sister chromatids, good. Separates the sister chromatids. Now, what is the fate of these four cells? For animals, all of these will be, let's say if this is a male, they will all be sperm, right? These will all be gametes that are haploid. So when you see fate of daughter cells, gamete, haploid <coughs> sex cells of animals. Now, plants are different, okay? 
And I'm starting with a really simple plant. And I know this looks like a complex thing. Let's see what we already know. Let's see what we can figure out based on what I told you earlier. Look at it with your bio buddy. Start somewhere. Maybe start at fertilization and work your way around from there. Where does it go different from us? Talk about it. Okay, so let's start with my Meiosis only occurs one time, right here. You see it? Okay. So this plant structure right here, this is the diploid sporophyte. That means he's a two-end structure. He's diploid, right? Okay. He is undergoing my, oh my, what? Meiosis. Okay. This sporophyte, sporophytes always make spores. Gametophytes always make gametes. Say it. Sporophytes always make spores. Gametophytes always make gametes. This sporophyte is making these spores. If he underwent meiosis, what could you tell me about these spores? They are all what? Haploid. So these are all haploid structures. When they grow up to be these bigger structures, which way, what are they gonna do to get bigger? Mitosis. They're haploid, a haploid cell making more haploid cells, okay? And that haploid structure that they grow up into be is called the gametophyte generation. Gametophytes always make gametes. By what process will they make those gametes? Mitosis, they're already haploid. Okay, they can't do meiosis again. Okay, they can't be quadruploid. Okay, so they undergo mitosis and now they make gametes which can fuse together through the process of fertilization and make a two end diploid. This is alternation of generations. Plants do it. Yes? If an entire organism can be subjected to form like a haploid, does that mean that you only need half your chromosome to technically survive? You and I know. Okay. Yeah, if plants, plants can be polyploids. Like most of the wheat um, crops that we eat in our bread are all polyploid. They have multiple copies. They are like mutant ninja turtles of plants, okay? They have multiple copies of their chromosomes and they can do fine. We get one chromosome off, we have issues usually, okay? Um, definitely couldn't handle a whole set. Um, something else on there I wanna talk about. I can't remember what it is. Okay, so this, these two, they live separately. Ferns, if you look at a fern, you ever seen those little dot, dot, dot underneath a oh, fern yeah. leaf? Okay, so what they're doing right there is they're undergoing myomyosis, oh, my. and they're gonna release what? Spores, because sporophytes always make spores. Their spores grow up into a sporophyte, but ferns, it's not, it is separate and free living, but it's a little itty bitty heart-shaped structure, and that's their gametophyte. It's not another whole plant, like where you would see, you know, seaweed or something growing. It, it, it is like a very small little structure. Then as you get on land, because see, where do ferns live? Can they live in the desert? Mm -hmm. No, what's gonna happen to this little tiny green photosynthetic gametophyte? In the desert, he would what? Shrivel up. up, right? So the more we are on land, the more evolved land once they protect that little gametophyte, protect it within. So the flowering plants we have right there, their gametophyte never even leaves them. Their gametophyte, even though it's a totally different generation, it's embedded within the flower, and it's like seven cells big. It's like, I'm a little gametophyte, making gametes, okay? And then pollen comes, and it's a gametophyte, it's made its gametes, and then it fertilizes it and forms another diploid zygote, which it could protect like within a seed, right? If it's a seed plant, okay? So we have different types of cycles depending on what kind of organism you are. Here is this mouse. You can see this one. You would recognize this. This is like what we do. Whose turn is it? Slate. 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 Talk about the mouse. You're going to rotate through. Start here, the two end. Okay, so 
Okay, so, and we're going to revisit this at the, again at the end, but you have this alternate generation fungi, which I don't even have up here. If you go to the grocery store and buy some fungi to put in, you know, mushrooms, to put in your spaghetti, all that structure you're seeing, it's all haploid. Fungi, when they send out their little hyphae and join through fertilization, it's like they join and they immediately undergo meiosis and all of their structures that develop from that are all haploid structures. So they're all variations on that theme. So here, we know what homologous pairs are, right? And in, in animals, in animals, we have the female gamete and the male sperm, and we rejoin and we make our diploid, and all structures are two N. But in plants, okay, this would be part of a flower, and um, you have the stigma, the style, and the ovary in here, and this little um, seven-celled structure, it looks like eight, but that's called polar nuclei, we'll learn about that later. This little seven-celled structure right here, this middle one right here is the egg. This little reduced structure is the gametophyte, which is then going to get fertilized by this pollen growing in here and uniting with it. Okay, so those are all variations on the theme of when you do mitosis and meiosis. So on your notes, go to fate of daughter cells, spores, haploid cells that germinate to become the haploid generation, which is called the what? Gametophyte, that which will then produce, what do gametophytes always produce? Gametes. <coughs> which will then produce gametes. And a zygote, okay, a zygote is a diploid somatic cell formed from the union of two gametes. And in that zygote, like in you, tell your bio buddy right now, who do you look more like, your mom, your dad, a grandma, an uncle, an aunt? All right, you are a result, you are a result of genetic recombination. It is a new combination of genes, never formed before. You are over 70 trillion possibilities. Over 70, you are one in 70 trillion. You are important, you are special, okay? Non-sexual organisms have to rely on mutations for variation. Non-sexual organisms have to rely on mutations for variation. Okay, and then I, you want to break this into segments, those of you that are watching? This period one would say stop right there and put a new section on. Yes? yes. Okay, all right. So make good choices. That's all I have to say there.